During senior high school and college, I was less concerned about getting women, drinking, and parties, and was more concerned and even insecure about being good at art. A very irrational thought for a male teenager at that time, I guess, but it was an obsession that both broke me and rebuilt me. Sometimes, there comes a point in our life where we just have to let go of the things we want, whether that's because it's causing more harm than good, not being ready yet, or just a net negative on one's life. To me, it was my pursuit of digital art and storytelling. Since elementary to senior high, I was always adamant on building a world, a story, expressed through digital painting in specific, as I was always fascinated by the medium. Not that it was convenient or efficient, but it was a process that enticed me. For years, I painted and painted so many things over and over again. The same story, the same part, never moving forward. In the end, I was just running in circles. For years, there was no improvement, my art and storytelling remained stagnant, and I didn't even finish a proper chapter after all those years. And so, all that came to a halt around 2017 to 2018, where I just stopped and let go, because it was driving me insane. My frustrations with art and where I was at that time was complicated, and so one day, I went back to the basics. Giving up my stylus and tablet, picking up pencil and paper, and there began my drawing arc. In 2017, I went back to the drawing board, literally, and began learning to draw again from the basics. But instead of the insurmountable information scattered all throughout the internet, I simply focused on this one book. Now, bear in mind, this is an old book from America, but it would be a couple of years later when I would learn the concept of racism, so instead, I was focused heavily on its process of drawing more than anything else. And it was here I developed the skill of laying out foundation. From this simple portrait book, I realized that it wasn't the hyper-realistic rendering or the posh, expensive charcoal pencils that made good portraits. It was simply the skill of laying foundation properly. Here, as you can see, they are truly just practice portraits. A little bit warped in comparison to the references, but if viewed from a respectable distance, or actually just a proper viewing distance, they look semi-realistic, despite when you look closer, the strokes, lines, and shades are just simple fluid and rigid things on paper. Again, this was when I realized that truly, it is not the quality of the tools that count, but the quality of the artist himself or herself. Since at that time, I've always had it like a strict doctrine that human portraits, if you were to approach them realistically, would require extremely detailed techniques and super expensive charcoal pencils. But armed with a Mongol too and a few intentional strokes, I achieved what I wanted to achieve. It was a revelation built on trusting a process. And at that time, I would always remember as a beginning of great things to come. Now, it wouldn't be until another year that I would begin expanding from portraiture towards human anatomy, where I realized that laying out foundational sketches is not only limited to portrait drawing, but to my study of muscles, bodies, and figures as well. When I entered college and took a course different from fine arts, I did not waver and let the artist in me wither and die. I bought a sketchbook and practiced. And to give some advice, please don't start with anatomy. Go with figures, values, or just the fundamentals first. It'll be easier that way. But that wasn't what happened to me. From doing portraits, I thought that logically the next step would be the whole body. Thankfully though, I wasn't trapped in a cycle of inadequacy anymore and took proper steps to practice anatomy, despite my lack of the fundamentals at that time from the bones, to the muscles, and to the skin on top, trying to logic how all these things work. As you can see, I could have done better, but by brute force practice and moving one step at a time, I got good. And better. Slowly, of course, but still, progress was progress. Not a perfect road, but at least I was moving forward. 
Drawing human anatomy was no longer this mystery or occult practice that only elites or old masters could do. By practicing certain skills such as drawing foundation and fundamental practices such as form, values, and perspective, I kind of felt unstoppable. And going into the second semester of the first year of college, I bought this black book and it culminated into a beautiful stream of practice and study. After all those years of frustration and struggle with my artistic endeavors, I was finally making progress. Imperfect, sure, but moving forward, it absolutely changed my world, gave me hope that all was not yet lost, and to me at that time was all that mattered. From anatomy, to trees, to clothing, nature, buildings, I was immersed in those moments of time, into a melody, an epic rhythm that heralded a never-ending journey that was my art. And of course, I would notice that I needed to brush up on my fundamentals. Speaking of which, the fundamentals aren't called the fundamentals for nothing. Now, what are considered the fundamentals of drawing varies from different sources. But from what I can recall from my own experiences, it would be shapes, form, values, perspective, and color. And from that, you can practically draw or paint anything. And trust me when I mean you can draw or paint anything. Like for example, I had no interest nor intention in drawing animals, but parts of my story and illustrations were going to include some of them at some point in time. And so when I applied the practice of building a drawing from simple shapes, intentional strokes, and mindful values, drawing animals, which was something I wasn't very fond of, became doable, and even in the first time, presentable. That's the power of the fundamentals, baby. It's such a cerebral thought that merely practicing these fundamentals, not necessarily mastering them, but just practicing them to an adequate level, allows you to see through the process of drawing in a new light. And it's kind of like learning magic. Simple shapes and basic lines that would form and mold anything, extending my study of drawing anatomy, I further practiced clothing, armor, animals, environments, whatever piqued my curiosity, or what was needed to fulfill a vision and story. Not only was I learning to draw at this time, but ever since I halted digital painting, I turned my colored works to watercolor. Now, as much as I'd like to talk about that journey, I believe it's a story for another time, but I bring this up because even within my study and practice of watercolor painting, the lessons and practices I learned from drawing carried over smoothly and blended well with a whole host of other principles I had to learn. It was really a long two years, and by mid-2019, I returned to making comics. But that would be its own tale once again. And so, in that one year of my first year college where I took the medical technology course, I inadvertently studied the fine arts at least what I needed to study in order to get to where I am today. Speaking of which, I have in these past couple of years returned to digital painting and doing my story, which were goals that I had to let go of five years ago. Perhaps it's some kind of fate, that if something is truly yours, it will come back to you. In some paradoxical sense, by letting go of my pursuit of digital painting and making a story, I'm somehow now doing digital painting and making a story, with something to show for, finally achieving past dreams and goals. Note, however, I didn't actually give up on my pursuit of uh, digital art or just art in general. I let go of my toxic view on the pursuit of art. There is a difference. And that is kind of how I explain the paradox of letting go and it eventually coming back. It was never giving up on the goal, but letting go of the obstacle in the way of the goal, which looked like the goal at that time, but was actually just a detrimental viewpoint of it that caused problems. Now, I hope that made sense. It made sense to me, so some people might get it, I suppose. So that's good enough, I guess. <laughs> so looking back at this, the problem wasn't the problem itself. In the context of my experience, the problem wasn't doing digital art or making stories and comics, because in any case, these goals and pursuits aren't malicious by themselves. No, 
The problem was with me, my thinking, my perspective, and my sense of self. My viewpoint was so narrow that I ended up in that cycle of beginner hell, the loop of being inadequate and so I have to start over and over again, self-sabotage, because I thought I was a failure at art, I should act as a failure myself and do bad habits instead of becoming disciplined, and thinking less of myself, because of acting like a failure, I am a failure. The problem was essentially insanity. And so, if you find yourself in a place where I once was, where the pursuit of something is now futile or you're not getting what you want, other than my brute force method of letting go but not giving up, grinding with the zeal to become great with my craft, honing my skills and all those hard work, I suggest you just talk to someone. Yeah, don't go through the years of grinding reflection and doing the, quite frankly, unnecessary hard work. While those will make you stronger, independent, and grow as a human being, something I can attest to for sure, you'll end up like me, alone, friendless, relationshipless, and not conventionally successful. While being able to make awesome paintings, build cosplay, learn hobby electronics, and making my dream comic has led me to an otherwise fulfilled life for the time being, I think I could have had all this without developing mental scars. If only I had said something to anyone and communicated like a real human being. While I took it the hard way and grew some skin, there is always a better way. Like how there is a better way to raise boy into becoming man other than sending them off to war and return with shell shock. So talk to someone. That's my advice. And for the love of God, don't go around being silent and mysterious your entire teenage to young adult life. It's not gonna make you look cool. More often than not, you'll just look abnormal. You have no idea of the number of potential relationships and friends I could have made if I was more open. Because time and time again, the friends that I did gain would often tell me that so and so wanted to be friends or were interested in me if not for the fact that I looked and behaved like someone who would snap your neck if you weren't looking. Stop trying to be silent and mysterious, it's cringe. But going back to talking to someone about your pent up frustrations or desires, or just being more open, if no one from your friends and family are willing to understand, throw it to the void of the internet. Trust me, someone will understand, because someone out there is going through or has gone through the struggle of what you're facing. Yes, there might be the occasional ridicule or pessimistic arguments, but just see through all that and you'll find people to relate to. Especially as artists nowadays, with the whole AI thing, if that existed back then, I don't know what I'd be today, cause that shit's existential. Nonetheless, art, craft, hobbies, profession, business, whatever, it's always wise to develop or create strong foundation, especially between other people. But in any case, what resulted from such drawing arc was the ability to achieve my goals from giant pencil portraits, replicating old art that I liked, illustrating my favorite games or hobbies, and eventually in making my own stories and illustrations. Really though, I thought that my life was boring because I missed out on so much by not having a girlfriend or multiple partners, exuberant amounts of money, fame, parties, getting blackout drunk, such and such. Looking back and realizing all of this, this was what I needed all along. A backbone built on a genuine journey to accomplish art for the sake of art and truly be an actual artist. Seeing something grow such as developing a skill from crude drawings to presentable pieces. And so although in the grand scheme of things, my achievements are not world-changing, not necessarily, it is at least of substance, a journey which had weight to it, that changed my life for the better. And whatever happens from here on out, at the very least, I got to experience something true. Well then, that was my drawing arc experience with a hint of self-reflection to top it off. And that will be all. And remember, 
If you're pursuing something of grandeur, like art, a hobby, or passion project, with all your heart and soul, no one will ever have the right to judge you for not having tried.